Hey, welcome to Absolute Underground TV. I'm your host, Jake Warren. Absolute Underground TV, the only show that exposes you to the underground arts and entertainment scene of Victoria, BC. It's raw, it's real, and it isn't making any apologies. This is Absolute Underground TV. Saturday, June 8th, 2013 was the 10th annual skateboard competition at Vic West Skateboard Park uh, for the last few years. Actually, since its very beginning, Jimmy Miller and the city of Victoria putting that on every year. This was the first year that Alex Eddy was in charge. I was there. I brought a camera. This is what happened. V-Dub 2013. <laughs> And what we have going on today is the 10th annual Vic West Skateboard Competition. Uh, this has been put together with some of the local skate shops as well as the City of Victoria. Uh, we have a bunch of prizes we give away, different competitor levels. Uh, it started originally as a Youth Week event to celebrate youth here in Victoria. Moved into more of a local skate community event still focused around youth and young skateboarders. Um, now we've moved it into June and, and the partnerships are going strong with our skateboard uh, shop representatives and we've got uh, a fantastic event going on here. So good, another good turnout, good year. We, the event usually brings out around 900 spectators or so and we usually have close to 100 competitors. Um, all Lots of local talent here coming out and showing their stuff and showing what they can do. All the funds raised from it uh, either go back into the prize caching uh, that get handed out during the cash best trick or the advanced category. Uh, and if they're not going there, they're going into the City of Victoria youth programs uh, to help get youth in the community out on skateboards and uh, out in their community being healthy, playing around. <laughs> Vic West Skate Comp's been going on for about 10 years. Jimmy Miller started it up and uh, we've just been like going hard with it every year. It. He did a good job 10 years in. I got, good. I got to take over from Jimmy doing the MC thing and I like enjoyed every second of it. We got the new Jamer wall in and it's and it's mint. Like people killed it and uh, 
yeah, looking forward to doing it again next year. Tell me a little bit more about the jammer wall then. Uh, the jammer wall was put in after jammer passed and uh, it, it, uh, it worked out to being like a curved barrier style thing. And uh, the way it can be skated, you can come out of the old park, which was the original spot. And you come out of the old park and you, you land onto this, this curved wall, which gets steeper as you go out. And there's a uh, sick plaque about uh, with jammer doing a fat indie. How important is this contest every year to this city and this community? For the skateboard scene in Victoria, this contest is the contest. There is there is nothing else in the city that brings all the skateboarders together in Victoria. It, this is the shit. Everything happens at Lucky Bar. Everything. In the world of tattooing here in Victoria, Sparky, the owner of Urge Studios, is considered a veteran. He's been around the game for 20 years. Finally, we got a chance to sit down and talk with him about tattooing and the constantly changing world of the industry and owning a shop. Well, I'm, I was actually, I'm, I'm from Van, uh, Victoria, more or less. I was born in Prince Rupert, but we moved, uh, we moved uh, around a little bit and then we came here in 1972. And so I've lived on the island since then. So I, I consider myself from the island. Well, I've been tattooing for 18 years now, and I've owned Urge for 10 of the, 10 of those years. Um, and I've noticed a real shift in the industry as far as becoming legitimate businesses. Like this is a legitimate business. Like our taxes are in order. Um, people that work here are legitimate tattoo artists. You know, it's kind of a double-edged sword because uh, you know. Uh, Back when I first started, it was still pretty underground, and you were tattooing some pretty underground kind of people. And nowadays, I'm tattooing um, people in the criminal justice uh, industry. I'm tattooing um, older, older men and women, uh, politicians, that sort of stuff. And it's kind of a neat feeling. And uh, we, just, my wife and I, just recently bought a new car, and to be able to walk into a bank and go, "Yeah, I own a tattoo shop." I need to buy a new car and then going sign on the dotted line how much money do you want to borrow because they know it's a legitimate business um, so that sort of thing's kind of neat like that uh, that it is becoming like that do i miss the old days when it was more underground sometimes because there's so much more responsibility and stress with with trying to trying to stay on top of everything, you know, like trying to deal with the health department. They're way more involved with the industry now, um, which is a good thing. I'd never, I'd never ever want it to go back the way it was, uh, where the health industry really had no idea about tattooing. They knew very, very little about it and were pretty much baffled when you had any questions or if you wanted some input from them. They were basically just the authority. They walked in and they kind of went, oh, do you have running water? And then they were like kind of freaked out and wrote a piece of paper and threw it at you and left. But now they're very involved. Like they actually phone and follow up on stuff and find out, you know, if there's anything you need or, or information that you want and stuff like that. So I think that's 
the whole health and safety aspect of, of the industry has gone up leaps and bounds, and I think that's a good thing. I think the first tattoo shop I ever went to was a place called uh, Triangle Tattoo. It's in Fort Bragg, California. And I'd never been in a tattoo shop before. And the woman who owned the shop uh, was writing a book about being a female tattoo artist. And I got to meet her, her name's uh, Karen Silverman. And I started asking all these questions about, well, how do you become a tattoo artist? It never really crossed my mind before. And it kind of dawned on me that maybe this is something I should pursue. It'd be something I could get into. And when I came back to Victoria, I went to a couple of shops and I didn't really like the, the shops that were around at the time and nothing really felt like I, it was somewhere I would fit in or, or I could relate to the people. And so I met John and me and John like really hit it off and then he, uh, he's the guy that apprenticed me. So, and uh, sort of took off from there. And, uh, my mom worked in an art supply store when I was a kid, and I was always in, interested in art, and I was always immersed in it. I was always around people that were artists. Uh, my mom had a really eclectic group of friends. They were, a lot of them were artists, uh, painters or sculptors, stuff like that. Um, so all through high school, I was, you know, it was the subject I was really good at. It was the thing that I, I liked to do, and, and, and spent a lot of time in the art room. Um, and then after, after school, I was, uh, I was involved in music, I played in a bunch of different bands, and did a lot of sculpting and drawing. Mostly I did, uh, did three-dimensional stuff, I did a lot of sculpting. Um, I actually uh, did a, sh a couple of shows, sold some stuff, and it was sort of a balance between the music and the, and the three-dimensional art. Um, and when I stopped playing music was when I started tattooing. That just sort of kind of fell into my lap as I met. I met the guy that started Urge Studios and uh, we kind of hit it off as friends and uh, had a sort of uh, personal relationship. We, we, we became pretty close and then he one day said, well, have you ever thought of doing this for a living? And I was like, well, yeah, I've always been interested in it. I always liked it. So it takes a special kind of crazy person to surf the waters off the west coast of British Columbia. I've never done it. Bryden Parker hadn't done it until recently. He went up to Tofino, spent a whole day at surf school, had a blast, made a show about it. Check it out. Bryden Parker here for Option Underground's West Coast Report. Going surfing to Tofino. So, I'm stopping in an epic surf shop, talking to my old buddy Jason Hines, get a few pointers. It's been a long time since I surfed, so. Hey, Jason, you around here anywhere? Hey, Brian. How's hey, it going, buddy? buddy? So, you're going surfing. Yeah, I'm going surfing. You're, right. right. <laughs> you're going to uh, head up to Tofino? Yeah. yeah. How long has it been since you've been, you been surfing? 16 years. Holy crap, dude. Yeah. That's forever. You still swim? I can swim. Right on. So, hold your breath. I can hold my breath. Duck that? I can duck dive, yeah. Well, you're not going to be duck diving something like that. You're going to be uh, looking for something, uh, you know, a lot more volume. Yeah. The uh, waves are pretty small this time of year. Yeah. So, start thinking bigger, bigger is better. So, you're making boards. I am. I'm making lots of boards. I make long boards, short boards, you name it. 
We're building them. Do you have um, a search school I could recommend for me up there? Um, yeah, I'll check out Brew Others. Uh, Brew Others, Live to Surf. Um, who else has got one? Pacific Rim Surf School. Um, yeah, there's a few to check out for sure. Okay. Um, if you want to catch up with my buddy Gavin, he's one of our team riders. Check him out, he'll give you lots of pointers. I like that idea. Yeah, yeah. It's good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff for sure. Okay, well, I'll go check out Gavin and uh, can we come to your shop? And yeah, and you come shop? Shop and Sweet. check out what's going on. I'm finally here, I'm in Tofino, at the end of Weck Beach, end of Weck Road, one of Canada's national parks. Just gonna wait for Gavin to show up. Oh, here he comes now. Hey man, how's it going? Good, Bryden. What's going on? Oh, we're just down here. I brought my friend Trinity to uh, teach you how to surf a little bit. <laughs> nice, nice to meet you, Trinity. Nice to meet you too. Hey, do you have any tips for me? Did you check the surf report? No. You should probably check the surf report before you drive all the way down from Victoria. Are you gonna ride that small board? I think we need wax. What kind of suit you wear in there, Bryden? <laughs> uh, it's a dry suit, man. You don't, you don't think this is good for surfing in? I got a wetsuit, but uh, you can try it out. Oh, I'm good, but it seems I'm doing everything wrong. I didn't check the surf report. I've got the wrong suit. I don't have any wax. You guys say my board is too small. I think I'm doomed to failure here, but I'm totally going to give it a shot, man. So let's try surf. Let's go have fun. All right. Yeah. Thanks for coming out. So we need lots of wax on here. Is that it? You need lots of wax? There we go. So Gava, you've got some shots with your GoPro already. Um, would you mind taking this one out and so that we can get some shots of you out there? Sure, right and on. Maybe you can get a couple shots of me and training stuff, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I can do some shots for you, man. So we're head surfing. What do you think? Anything I need to know? Any last tips? I think you need a better suit is a good tip. <laughs> I'm getting burned all the way along here. It's a good thing I'm going to the water and put these fires out. Oh, right, let's surf, guys. Let's do it. Woo! Here at Option Underground TV, Brian Parker's West Coast Report, surfing, signing off.
thezone.fm. So from the FUBAR movies and the tours, I assume that Diener was all about giving her, getting wasted. But the guys from Nightseeker can actually play. I had a blast at the show. Ira Hunter did too. He hung out with Diener beforehand in the hotel room, did an interview. Ladies and gentlemen, the Diener. It's the Diener! Hey! How you guys doing? Absolute underground. Absolute fucking number one. Glad to see you guys are finally on fucking TV, man. It's really sweet. You guys got a sweet deadly magazine. Now you're taking it to the next fucking level. Woo! So yeah, I'm the Diener. I'm from that fucking movie FUBAR 1, and then 10 years later FUBAR 2, and now one year later Night Seeker. What happened to Creeper? That's a good question. I mean, it's what happens to all good bands is they just like, they reach that apex and then, you know, like one buddy like knocks off a hooker and then the other buddy loses a leg trying to fucking, you know, ride a, ride a railway train. And, you know, it's just, you know, when it's just you and the drummer, you're just, you, you know what I mean? You got to start looking for other things, you know? And uh, so that is, we just moved on. If I got both of them, I got all. Well, I can live life without liquor. I know that it'd be hard. I'm without girls and rock and roll. Great. Oh, what's Terry been up to? Yeah, well, he's he's not exactly what they call a musical so you know terry like sometimes like last time we came up to bc terry came came out for a couple shows and he was banging his head and shit it's a really serious thing like war and crime and rock and roll ain't a game but when you know all the rules you gotta pick up your guitar and play and play you know, we started Night Seeker because we felt that there was a lot of good in the world that wasn't being uh, sort of like counterbalanced with evil. So we decided, the four of us decided to get together and to try and, uh, to, yeah, basically to be a, 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 a counterbalance to all the good. There needed to be a little bit more, uh, a little bit more balance in the scales of evil. A new one we're working on called Extra Large No Lube. That sort of describes uh, the way we like to do it. <laughs> yeah, and Cold War, fuck winter, you know? Yeah, well, the, the Night Seeker live show, I mean, you know, we're not reinventing the wheel, you know? It's like you start off with sort of a, like a classic kind of riff. Ours is like... You know, and it's just, it, it builds from there. And then we sort of like midway through the set, we'll sort of like, we'll have a little like little break, you know, a little for the ladies, and I'll do a little sort of acoustic number. And then we just, you, you know, then you hit, you hit them back, like right in the face, the big slap, and then uh, you build to the finish. We did like a karaoke thing and it was it was deadly man. It was like one of the better fucking times I ever had in my life. So yeah, no, I got fucking vivid memories of Victoria. People really know how to party. We were at the the, part, the bar down the street there. We were like me and Terry, we did like a karaoke thing and it was it was deadly man. I remember a guy did like a backflip off a first floor balcony and he landed on his head and he got up and he was just like, Woo! That's the last time I was here. I was pretty impressed by that. I think the guy's name was Glenn, with two N's or something like that. It 
watch an absolute underground on TV, on the internet, and in outer space, and I'm the fucking deaner. Woo! Got no time for teacher balls. Hello, I'm Matt the Intern, and welcome to the Absolute Underground Store, located in the heart of downtown Victoria, underneath this sketchy alley. The Absolute Underground Store is awesome if you're into hardcore, punk rock, or heavy metal music. We have hundreds of scary black t-shirts. A great selection of underground horror films. Rock and roll biographies. Punk rock fiction. And disturbing comic books. And loads of local band merchandise. The Absolute Underground Store, featuring Burning Moon Video, is located underneath Trounce Alley at 1215 Government Street, Victoria, B.C.